Where are you seeing opportunity in what has been a really a sort of a wasteland uh, in terms of the home builders so far this year? Yeah, uh, it's been tough in the builders, no question about that. Um, we still see, you know, a base case now with mortgage rates over 7%. We're, we're, we're preparing for home prices to fall. Uh, all else equal, probably median prices need to come down 20 to 25%. Um, that's going to be tough sledding for a long time, for, for many months ahead. Um, where we do see some opportunity, I think, uh, at least within the builders, certainly, uh, we think being the low-cost price point, I think D.R. Horton being the low-cost uh, producer of U.S. housing uh, has an advantage and also has a, a nice head start in single-family rentals. And single-family rental platforms, we think, are going to be an increasingly important component of meeting the demand that's out there uh, and where there's still a pretty significant supply shortage. Um, where we also see, you know, uh, an opportunity is within the SFR REITs, uh, single-family rental REITs. American Homes for Rent is our top idea there. Uh, we think AMH has a great platform, also a, a build-for-rent platform that's going to help them uh, gain some traction and, and growth, uh, trading at big discounts to NAV. And with the cost-to-own versus cost-to-rent spread at just historically uh, high levels, we think uh, you're going to find an ability for the, the single-family rental REITs uh, to continue maintaining uh, outsized cash flow growth relative to a lot of other subsectors in real estate out there, uh, particularly, I think, core multifamily. And that's, that's one area we do have some caution at the moment is apartment rent growth is decelerating dramatically uh, month over month and, and quarter over quarter, much more so than we would have anticipated uh, as we have a lot of new apartments delivering uh, at the same time that we're seeing a pretty uh, significant consumer pullback in terms of household formation. I'm, I'm wondering what you think is going to happen, say, with timber and lumber, if people are, are feeling like they're priced out of homes, which we've, we've seen in many markets across the United States. What do you think happens with, with um, these sort of housing um, materials? That's a great question, and, and I think that's an opportunity, quite frankly, is uh, we've seen lumber prices come down dramatically already. Uh, in many cases, lumber has, has been leading the market and, and already pricing in a housing recession. And so what we see is that uh, lumber is already trading down to cash production costs. Uh, particularly in terms of what it costs to produce in uh, British Columbia, for example, around $500 per thousand board feet. Um, we're seeing, you know, some pretty significant capacity curtailments in lumber production. So believe it or not, even with housing production on the single family and, and multifamily side coming down, one area we think is going to hold up is the repair and remodel market uh, as basically households hunker down and they're already locked in with these really attractive sub 4% mortgage rates. Uh, they're not going to move. They're going to reinvest and they're going to still do uh, pretty big ticket projects. They've got a great balance sheet and savings lined up. Uh, we think that's going to be steady demand for lumber and wood products. And we think names like Weyerhaeuser uh, and Potlatch Delta, uh, two names on our side on the REIT list that have significant lumber production and leverage to lumber prices, are going to hold up really well. And they're already priced for a recession, uh, trading at big discounts to NAV and uh, offer some very sizable supplemental dividends for investors based on cash flow that they've already earned earlier in this year. Mm -hmm. So can uh, I just, Weyerhaeuser can I just and Potlatch ask you are about great that? ideas. Like, uh, so are those, yeah. those REITs, those timber and lumber REITs, they own the forests, and then somebody else manages it and produces the timber? So they, they own both. They own, they own the forest land, so you have cash flow from the growing the trees themselves. So you have a, a base of assets, which is the, the trees, which you know, off, also are, offer a carbon optionality, which is very attractive for investors. And then they also own sawmills, sawmills and uh, wood products manufacturing facilities. So they, they bring the logs straight to their own sawmills. Uh, cut the wood themselves and sell it into the open market. So those two names are vertically integrated operations, and uh, the, the leverage to lumber prices is what's not being factored into the value of the stock. So, so I want to go back to the to the rental market that you were talking about to make sure that I understand uh, what you liked and what you sh say shy away from. Single family rentals, the companies that are in that market, you like their prospects better, as I understood it than the companies, the REITs that are involved in multifamily rental REITs where you see too much supply coming on. Did I, did I get you that, right? That, that, 
That's exactly right, Tyler. And, and we think those two product types are not quite as fungible as, as investors or, or many people would think they are. Uh, we're talking about, you know, for single family suburban houses, mm -hmm. uh, people are, are, you know, looking for space. They're looking for work from home options and they're young families, typically in their mid to late 30s. And we're actually seeing a nice little boom in, in some of the births data suggesting that households mm. that have been delaying families are starting those families. They need the space. They need the suburban lifestyle. Apartments are a little bit more of a, you know, a, you know there, there's a little bit of a delay factor where households can defer. Uh, they can double up. They can uh, consolidate roommates. They can live with mom and dad an extra year or two to try to, you know, save up some extra money. And that's what we're seeing is significant mm -hmm. household consolidation at the, the multifamily level, mm, I gotcha. whereas single-family rentals are, are growing. 